It's Fan Fiction Friday. Let's grade your trades here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Friday, October 18th, 2024. This is Tony Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Fan Fiction Friday, and if you're new to the show, we get Mariners trade ideas from listeners, react to them, and then grade them on the 2080 scale, 20 being the worst, 80 being the best, of course. And we grade these trades based on a lot of different factors like creativity, if it's a target we haven't heard from you guys before, practicality, etc. Before we get into the trades, shout out to our title sponsor today, Prize Picks. Download the app today and use the promo code Locked On MLB. That's L O C K D O N M L B to win fifty dollars instantly when you play your first five dollar lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. And if you want to hear from me and Colby even more and help support the show, check out our Patreon. Sign up now to hear us create our 2025 Mariners offseason plans before we show it off here. Show them both off here. Sportsbet Jake has a deal here with the Brewers. Reese Hoskins for Mitch Hanniger and Tyler Locklear. This idea essentially is to repurpose Mitch Hanniger's money. It's going to cost you Tyler Locklear, but it is trying to find a way to repurpose that money into something that could actually help you, which is an idea that we've thrown around quite a bit here with Hanniger. It's pretty much the only path that you can take to actually getting Hanniger's off uh, Hanniger's contract off the books and actually get something in return for it, right? Rather than just outright releasing him. Uh, we've talked about that with Bo Bichette, Bryce Iglesias, now Reese Hoskins. Mm -hmm. uh so what do you think yeah it's interesting um the brewers are a team that you know uh more on the the frugal side uh so you could definitely see them try and move the 18 million but you're going to try and move the 18 million and you're the brewers you probably want to save some money right like that's kind of the idea here is to trade and maybe you have to eat half of it but would you rather have you know let's say they eat half would you rather have nine million dollars or tyler locklear and do this trade. Mm. I don't know, but the, the brewers do have uh, Tyler black, I believe is still there. And, and he really struggled this last year, but it was a guy that they were quite high on to play first base. So, um, you know, is Locklear the guy that gets this done? I don't know for sure. Maybe, maybe they like Locklear more. Um, and maybe it's, I don't know, maybe they end up Tyler black ends up in this deal and it's just this big swap. But I think the thing with the brewers is, is that if they're going to trade Hoskins, they're going to try and trade him for salary relief and you don't get any in this trade. So um, to look at the trade just as it is right now, it is essentially Hoskins for Locklear. One year of Hoskins for maybe two, although if he has a good year, it's probably going to opt out next year. Um, but it's basically one year of Hoskins for one year or six years of Locklear. I don't have mm -hmm. a problem with that, um, but it's worth noting Hoskins is coming off of a pretty bad year uh overall remember he missed all of 2023 with the torn acl and this last year he came back and uh, yeah you know uh we're looking at what 32nd percentile in x woba 43rd percentile in slug uh 43rd percentile in average exit velo mm -hmm. uh whiff rate 39th percentile k rate 10th percentile he swung and missed a lot uh this mm -hmm. year and so is that just a guy who missed a full season and came back and was not quite the player he was is it because he's an older player uh now and and you know he's 31 years old is the bat slowing down uh i don't know you know and, and bat speed was 38th percentile this year it's really only a useful number if i know what it was in 2022 to see if the bat's slowing down it's tough to say so this could be a case where hoskins full year back off of the acl he looks a lot better looks like the guy he was a couple of years ago could be the case of a, a player reaching 30, 31 and declining. And keep in mind, Hoskins, not a good defender at first base. So really, you know, first base DH only. Uh, he's played a little in the outfield. That's a non-starter anymore with the busted up knee. So he's a limited player. If he doesn't hit and hit big, he's not that valuable of a player, which is why he had a negative war uh, this year. So again, it, it it's a big risk, uh, but it's a big risk in performance, but it's not much of a risk to the roster because again, the money is the same. 
it is mm -hmm. uh, would I trade Tyler Locklear in a vacuum for Reese Hoskins for one year? Yeah, I, I would. But um, I think when you look at what the Brewers would try to do if they're trading Hopkins, when you look at what the Brewers have on hand right now, they basically have their own Ty Locklear. So I like the idea. I just don't think that Locklear is the guy who gets it done. And I also question whether or not the Brewers are interested in in trading you know, Hoskins for a, a pretty good prospect instead of just trading him for less, but getting some of that money off of their books. I, I think they'd probably rather do that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so as you have the deal currently constructed, the Mariners would still be taking on four and a half million dollars. It would be five hundred thousand for the difference in twenty twenty five salaries between Hanniger and Hoskins, and then uh, the four million dollar buyout uh, for the mutual option in twenty twenty six. Um, so yeah, I mean Hoskins is uh you know he was a league average bat this year, one hundred WRC plus, did have twenty six bombs, drove in eighty. Uh, 29% K rate though. Uh, like you said, he swung and missed a lot. Uh, the walks stayed pretty much the same as they've been though. Uh, I think it's fine. I think it's a solid way to potentially repurpose that money for Manager. And I'm not losing sleep over trading Tyler Locklear to, uh, to take that shot. Um, yeah, it all comes down to if the Brewers would do it. I think this is fine. I I'll give it like a 50 yeah, um, I say fifty five. I think it's realistic. I think it's uh, pretty creative in terms of repackaging that money, um, and it could solve a need uh, for Seattle because, as we talked about, they have at bats to give either at first base or DH. Uh, so Hoskins can certainly play one of those two spots. So I think it's pretty creative. My, the only reason it's not a little bit higher is just because I don't know if Milwaukee is going to do this. Like it's not a no-brainer from Milwaukee. And I don't think Locklear is the guy that makes Milwaukee consider this. Sure. So yeah, 50, 55, somewhere in that range. Pretty good. Next trade here from Ross. Mariners get Yandi Diaz and Brandon Lau. And the Rays get Harry Ford, Tyler Locklear, Ty Pete, and Ryan Bliss. So the Mariners taking on uh 22 million dollars in salary 23 million dollars in salary i'm trying to remember how much diaz and lao make off the top of my head diaz is at 10 or sorry uh lao is at 10 and a half and then i think and diaz I believe, is at 12 i believe so yeah so 22 and a half million dollars being added here between the two guys for the mariners and they have to give up let me bring it up again ford lockley or pete bliss i just don't think the mariners do this yeah. Um, so Lau, guy that we've talked about a lot. Um, he makes sense to play second base. You have a need at second base. Diaz, you have a need at first base. You have a need at DH, one of those two spots. So you're definitely filling needs here. Uh, but it's a lot of money to give up. Um, I think Ford and Pete both being in the deal kind of ruins it. I, I don't think Seattle's going to do that for these two players, particularly because the Rays don't have a lot of leverage when it comes to Brandon Lau. Uh, they are either going to decline their his option or they're going to trade him. Like the Rays are a team that uh, you know has quite a few guys in Arb and, and Lau is a guy that they've carried and carried and carried, but it's just tough to justify paying him $10 million if you're the Rays when you have as much infield talent as Tampa does. Uh, so they don't have a ton of leverage there with Lau, and, and I think that they would they would rather trade him than non or than uh, not pick up the option and get nothing for him. But I think Ford, Locklear, Pete, and Bliss uh, for those for, for those two guys is a bit much. Um, so uh, I don't. And something else to keep in mind: the Rays uh, usually have a forty man crunch. They don't clear any forty man spots with this room, and typically they like bulk. Uh, when they're going for prospects. So I think when you break down this trade, it's it's like Diaz for Ford and Locklear. I mean, it's not terrible. The Rays need catching help, but they have uh, Oscar Isaacs at first base. Uh, who Isaac Oscar, Oscar. I Oscar Isaac. It's the, uh, the actor. <laughs> sorry. No, it's it's, uh, it's similar to that, though. It is. Uh, no, not Moon Knight. No, Isaac. thank you. Thank you, yeah. Xavier Isaacs. Uh, so, no, I, I just don't think that the Mariners are going to do this. I think the Rays would do it, but 
Uh, you're talking about giving up Ty Pete for Brandon Lau. You don't have to give up that much uh, to get Brandon Lau. Uh, so, no, I, I, I think this is a little bit of an overpay for Seattle. Um, they get a couple players who would definitely help them this year, but I don't think that Seattle wants to give up Ford and Pete uh, in a deal. Oh, no, just all the prospect capital plus they're going to have to spend $22.5 million on yeah. both of these guys. Yeah, that's just – that's. With everything we know about the Mariners and how they're unfortunately going to have to approach this off season. Yeah. yeah. That's just, that's a non-starter. Although if you could get Oscar Isaacs in the deal. Or Oscar Isaac. Yes. Do you want Moon Knight? I do. Poe uh, Dameron. Whatever his name was uh, in Ex Machina. Never saw he was, that one. He was also Apocalypse, which was bad. That was a bad movie. Wait, he was Apocalypse? Yeah, next. Did not know that was him. Okay, you know what? Now that I'm seeing that, yeah, yep, that totally looks like him. Even yeah, that movie sucks though. It does. Terrible. Does you know it doesn't suck? Moon Knight. It's all right. It's all right. Doesn't suck. Doesn't suck. Which you know can't be applied to all of the uh, Marvel shows, but yeah, it's fine. It's fine on Marvel. That's right. (laughs) That's right. We're gonna just wedge that in here. All right, so did we give it a grade? 40. 35. I think the valuation's off a little bit. What is that noise? I don't know. Colby might die on this episode, folks. All right, so let's uh, do more trades here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast, folks, is brought to you by Hems. All right, fellas, uh, you ever feel like you need a little boost in the bedroom? Well, if you do, you know what I'm talking about here. It's time you stop worrying about your performance and get hems so you can feel confident knowing you can get hard and stay hard whenever you're in the mood. Hems is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hems provides access to a range of doctor trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis in their generics for up to 95% cheaper. Start your free online visit today at hems.com slash locked on. That's H I M S dot com slash L O C K E D O N for your personalized ED treatment options. Hems.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. It is Fan Fiction Friday. We are reacting to and grading your Mariners trade ideas. This one comes from Ian. Logan Evans, Dominic Canzone, and Tyler Locklear to the Cleveland Guardians for one year of Josh Naylor. Now, Colby, I know you're very familiar with uh, with Naylor and his situation heading into this final year of his uh, club control. How much is he projected to make? About twelve million bucks. Twelve million bucks. All right. Yep. Give or take. So. Yeah, uh, so right off the right off the jump here, um, Locklear probably not going to be of any interest uh, to the Guardians. They have Kyle Manzardo, who's going to take over first base. Uh, he's had a big home run yesterday. They they like they're very high on on Manzardo, um, and they should be. Uh, he's probably going to hit pretty well. But the reason or the reason that Naylor is even available at all is because they have Manzardo, and Naylor's entering the final year of of club control. So. I would be pretty shocked if, if Josh Naylor wasn't shopped this year. Um, he had a pretty good year. He is a first baseman, uh, left-handed, doesn't strike out a ton. He'll hit 25 home runs, 30 home runs. Uh, but he really kind of struggled here uh, as of late. So there are some 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 concerns. He's kind of Luke Rayleigh minus the athleticism at the plate, but fewer strikeouts too. So he trades the athleticism for more contact. Uh, but he fits like he absolutely fits on this team. Uh, I just don't think Locklear is going to carry much weight, if any, uh, for the Guardians in this deal. Dominic Canzone is a throw in. He's basically worthless uh, in in this particular deal. He's worthless, sure. although sure. overall he doesn't have a ton of value either uh, at 27 years old. Uh, Logan Evans for for Naylor. 
uh, though, I, I think makes some sense. Cleveland really good at developing pitching. They, uh, they have a knack for it. So it may not be, maybe they don't like Evans, but maybe they like Morales or maybe they like Garcia either way. I think one of those type of pitchers, one of those, you know, not, I mean, the Mariners don't really have any top 10 pitchers, uh, in their top 10, I should say, uh, besides Sanja, uh, who they're not going to trade, uh, yet. Uh, so I think if it's a Morales or it's an Evans or it's a, a Garcia and then probably a little bit different filler, I, I think that you could definitely get something done for Naylor. Uh, so I think the idea, like the concept, the the guts of this trade, pretty good. I think it's a good mm-hmm. starting point. I think it's a 50, uh, 55. It's very realistic. I think it is at least. We'll see. I mean, you never know. Uh, but uh, Canzone and Locklear, I just don't think they do anything for the Guardians. So at this point, it's really Evans for Naylor. And I think the Guardians are, are going to want a little more, but maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe they really like Canzone. Maybe it's Evans and Morales. Maybe it's two yeah. of the pitchers, or maybe it's Evans and another <laughs> pitcher who's a little further away, like Jeter Martinez. Martinez. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, because they have Manzardo and they have Big Christmas, both of those guys pretty relevant over the last twenty four hours. Uh, I think they're good on first base options right now. So, yeah, forty five. Alex has a deal here with the uh, with the A's. Brent Rooker for Harry Ford, Tyler Locklear. Dominic Danzone, not Canzone, Danzone, and Emerson Hancock. Obviously, the prize here is uh, Emerson Hancock. Yes. Also, layoff of Alex. Sometimes ni- names are hard. You have to try and remember every major leaguer right. and minor leaguer there is. Sometimes names get mixed up. Okay. The uh, Dan Zone. Yes. The Dan, the Dan Zone. It sounds yeah. like a podcast. It's um, just a bunch of people named Dan. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, they just talk about how great Dan is as a name, but I then guess. there's like one guy, ga- there's one guy in there whose name is actually Dave, yeah. but everyone thinks it's Dan and he just lets he's, that roll. Yeah. He's just like, he's not a confrontational guy. So he's like, yeah, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't have the self-confidence to correct yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, so again, right off the top, Emerson Hancock, no value, just worthless. Get him out of your trades guys. He doesn't carry any value. Uh, Dominic can zone. Maybe. Like, mm-hmm. I think he probably carries more value to a team like Oakland than he does to a team like Cleveland, since they're at different points. But I don't think you've got the the ceiling of this deal, right? I don't think that the A's are going to be all that interested in Harry Ford. They have Langliers. They have Soderstrom. Um, I don't think Ford's going to get it done uh, for, for Rooker. I think unfortunately for Rooker for three years of this guy coming off the year he's coming off of, you probably have to give up Colt Emerson and yeah. I'm not remotely interested in that. Not for yeah. a DH only type. Uh, if you could talk, you, you know, we talk about Cole young and Laz Montez and, and one of those guys, maybe, yeah. but I'm not giving up uh, Emerson. And so at that point, I think the A's are just done. They're not going to engage. Yeah. Here, here's, Rooker. here's how the conversation goes, right? All right. Give us Bryce Miller or Brian Wu. No. All right, then give us Cole Emerson. No. Okay, well, kick rocks. Yeah. And that's the end of the conversation. I think that's probably how it goes. Um, You know, I guess maybe just maybe they love Laz Montez and you can go Laz and Harry Ford and and Evans and, and you know, the A's will take bulk uh, on occasion, but I don't think they're going to take it from you specifically. Uh, oh, Seattle's apparently been interested in Rooker. Uh, they were interested last summer and they basically got told we're not trading him to you. Uh, so yeah, Rooker kind of, I, I would love to have him. I think he, you know, his bat obviously has been great the last two years, especially this last year. He's one of my favorite players. Uh, he's a lot of fun. Uh, I just don't think he's actually available, uh, this year or this winter. Uh, and if he was made available, I think that what you're talking about is Seattle has to give up one of their three most valuable trade chips, which is Miller Wu or Emerson. Uh, Colt Emerson, the good Emerson in the system. Um, yeah, so this deal to me, it just it's a non-starter for Oakland. Uh, but we hadn't talked about Rooker a lot. I just wanted to check base on on like where I think the A's value Brent Rooker, and I think they would look at this deal and they'd be like, "Sure, add Colt Emerson, and we can talk." And yeah, I mean, remember when I did my top five trade targets? I did mention Brent Rooker as an honorable mention, but the reason that he didn't make the list because I said he would be number one on this list. If I thought they could realistically get him, I just don't think they can realistically get him. I mean, they can, but it's going to cost you Bryce Miller, Brian Wu, 
or at the very least Cole Emerson. And then at that point, it's like, all right, cool. But this is also a 30 year old DH basically who's had one like insane year, one really good year. And then really good year. And then, you know, whatever. Right. So, right. He does to his credit though, his favorite ballpark to hit in. T-Mobile. He, he so, has said he has said that. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I think he'd be a great fit for the town and for the clubhouse and for the team and all that stuff. Again, it's just in the pursuit of trying to acquire him. Are you actually getting better or are you getting worse? And if you're trading Miller or Wu, I think you're getting worse. Uh, and I think if you're trading Emerson, you get better this year. But in the long term, I think you get significantly worse because at the end of the day, Brent Rooker is a DH. Like that's what he does. Yeah. Could he yeah. play some first base for you? Probably. But he's a DH and a good one, maybe a great one if you can repeat what he did last year. Mm-hmm. But I'm not giving up, you know, six years of potential, you know, all star uh, shortstop or five years of a guy, two guys who are already established as like number four, number three starters in major league. I'm not doing that for a DH, any of them, except no. for Otani, but obviously that's different. So yeah, I think it's probably 35. Um, yeah. It, it just, I think you're underselling pretty significantly what it would cost Seattle to get Oakland to budge. Uh, mm-hmm. But I hope you're right because if I could get him for that, I would have done it yesterday. Yeah. I would do this in a heartbeat, which means right. that it's not going to happen. So right. 30. Yeah. I'll go 35. All right. We got a couple more trades to go over here in just a moment. But first a reminder, this episode of the lockdown Mariners podcast is once again, brought to you by price picks. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into $1,000. Think Tyreek Hill will get more than 90 and a half yards in week one? Or that Caleb Williams will throw for fewer than 236 and a half yards in his debut? Cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money. Money this football season when you and your crew run your game on Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the promo code Locked On MLB to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's promo code L O C K E D O N M L B on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. We are wrapping up Fan Fiction Friday here with a couple more of your trade ideas. ZZ Jam has a deal here with the Phillies. Alec Bohm and Jose Ruiz for Harry Ford, Logan Evans, Brandon Williamson. You mean Ben Williamson? Brandon Williamson is in Cincinnati, folks. And Josh and Rojas. He's also out for all of next year with Tommy John surgery. So That's right. Brandon, that is not not Ben. Yes, yes. Uh, who I assume you are referring to in this trade. Yes. And I say once again, names are hard. Okay, names are hard. Yes, mm-hmm. there's a lot of names floating around in in this noggin. Okay, sure. Sometimes yeah. we confuse, you know, top fifty uh, prospects sure. for famous actors. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oscar Isaac, Moon Knight, Poe mm-hmm. yeah. Dameron. That's right. Apparently apocalypse apocalypse <laughs> never piece that together. Just like it took me like three years to realize that Scott Hatterberg was Chris Pratt. He probably also doesn't want you to remember that he was probably. apocalypse. Yes, so. probably not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a true story. It took me three years to realize Chris Pratt was in Moneyball. Yeah. Just no, never I never pieced I, it together. Yeah. Like, I wait, never what? realized. I, Who yeah, does he I play? Hatterberg. What? <laughs> was, I, I'm trying to remember the first time that I watched Moneyball. Was that was that before I ever watched Parks and Rec? Because it, it must have been, right? Because I feel like if I saw that, if I saw that movie after watching Parks and Rec, I would have been like, oh, Andy. Moneyball came out in 2012. The worst part is, is that. I yeah, but I, wa- I started watching Parks and Rec like when it was in its fourth season or something like that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'd watched Parks and Rec for quite a while before I saw Moneyball. And I still didn't piece that together. That makes so. that makes it worse. Yeah, it does. But like, I don't know. I just, I just, I was, I don't know. Like, As we've established, 
more so on on the Patreon show, you are not good with faces. No, I'm not terrible with faces. I'm not that great with names, Tyler. So uh, it's it's not the best. Todd, actually. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. It's not yeah. the best formula, but uh, it is mm-hmm. what it is. Anyways, sure. uh, back to Alex Bombs. Um, Alex Bombs, <laughs> which is his yeah. alter ego, by the way. Right. Right. Um, right. I've just decided off air that Alec right. Bohm, when he hits a home run for the Mariners, will become Alex Bombs. Mm-hmm. Um, Solid. Yeah, yeah. Interesting trade. Uh, Bohm is certainly a, a really interesting guy, and, and like his inclusion into the thoughts of Mariner fans is pretty recent. Uh, mm-hmm. Philly, he struggled, blah blah blah, in the second half, particularly in the playoffs, and you know his manager essentially says that he's a low energy guy because they benched him. And the reason they gave for benching him in the playoffs was that like, Oh, we want to bring some positive energy or whatever to the, uh, you know? And, and so Bohm is a guy who, who is not having a lot of fun uh, at the moment uh, in, in Philly also famously uh, was caught mouthing. I effing hated here <laughs> after he made, I believe his third air of the game. Uh, what was yeah. that in 2023? um uh i think it might have been like 21 or 22 yeah i think it was so, earlier on in his career you know he's been a pretty productive player though like we have to give him that been a pretty productive player not not a great player by any stretch struggles a bit defensively uh so you kind of have to decide if you can help him uh, yeah he had a know. pretty good year defensively this year according right. to the metrics mm-hmm. which are as we always say are especially know. when it comes to outlier years but. right yeah. Uh, but so even if you, even when we want to say he's an average third baseman defensively, which he's probably not, he's probably a little bit below, doesn't hit a ton of home runs, does hit a lot of doubles. I think he had 40 doubles last year. Like he had a lot of doubles. Um, so he's a good player. He's a solid player, not a great player, not a superstar or anything like that. Uh, but when you look at what is available at third base this year, you get this guy for two years, you get him out of Philadelphia, which as we know is, is just a different atmosphere than it is here in seattle and seattle obviously has some success taking former hyped prospects who didn't really get it going in philly and and helping them relax and and kind of turn their career around uh seattle's an easier place to play than philly i mean it is what it is but that's the truth breaking Uh, news yeah i know shocking right yeah yeah west coast more laid back than east coast what um (laughs) So yeah, he he's really a guy who went from like we would never talk, we probably wouldn't talk about him all that much uh, two weeks ago to now being a guy that's like regularly part of our conversation because it seems like he might be available. So he's a fascinating yeah. dude this winter. Mm-hmm. Ford Evans, Brandon Williamson, sure, and Williamson, uh, and yeah, Josh- no, 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 Phillies, we will definitely give you Brandon <laughs> Williamson. Yep. You just you just have to call the the Reds to collect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, it's Ford and Evans. Uh, I feel like this is a little bit too much. Just mm. a little bit too much. If they mm. did this, I wouldn't hate it. Rojas, whatever, sure. don't care. He's throwing. It's just whatever. Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Evans, I like quite a bit. Uh, Ford, obviously, I like quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And Williamson, I like quite a bit, but I don't know if any of those those three guys are like above average major leaguers in their career. Like, I think they might. I think they're all major leaguers. I think they're all totally capable of making their major league debut this upcoming year. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if Philadelphia is going to do this because how do they view Harry Ford? Is he a catcher to them? Because they have Real Muto, and and while he's not very good anymore. He's still there, right? And he's still an important part of that team. Uh, Evans and Williamson, if they're role players, like, I don't know if there's enough bite here. I I, I have a different idea for Bohm that includes major leaguers that I think makes a little bit more sense than this. But overall, Ruiz, by the way, pretty interesting reliever, more of a middle guy, uh, big time fastball, velo, good curveball, gets some whiffs, but he's just a middle guy in this. He's not really a huge part of this, uh, mm. this trade. Uh, but obviously he is valuable, so you do have to pay for him a little bit. So this is really interesting. The valuation, I don't know if this is dead on. I don't know if this is way too low. I don't know if this is way too high. Like It's just tough to know how to value Alec Bohm right now because I don't know how Philadelphia is going to approach this. What I will say is, is I think Philly would probably prefer major leaguer and not Josh Rojas, like a major leaguer who can help them this upcoming year. 
Sure. So it's a total gut call here on the valuation. Um, I think if Philly is willing to take prospects and, and they are willing to take some bulk here, uh, I think this is about what a player, two years of a player like Bohm would, would cost if it was, if he wasn't playing for Philly. Mm-hmm. 45, 50, I think. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Bohm is such a, a weird valuation when you want to talk strictly prospects. How is uh, Ruiz factoring into the, uh, into the equation here? Right. How much is he factoring into the return? Because I I don't really like he doesn't move the needle for me at all. Like just he feels very Trent Thornton y. I mean he gets guys to chase. Cool. But he doesn't has he doesn't have a pitch that really stands out. I mean, it's a pretty good curveball, but it's not a plus curveball or anything like that. Yeah. Um so yeah, like again, to me, I just read this as like, oh, he's Trent Thornton. Which is fine, but you yeah, know, I I wouldn't give up Logan Evans for a Trent Thornton, right? So, yeah, um, yeah it's an interesting, it's a very interesting trade. Uh, I just I don't have quite a good feel enough for Baum and, and what he's going to cost to feel good about this. So uh, I wouldn't trade this for Baum straight up. I would, yeah. Given the red flags, all mm-hmm. that, yeah, um, I don't think ruiz is enough to tip yeah no any, tip the no, scale no, to no. yes so. so i'm i'm at a 45 with this yeah i'm at 45 or 50 i just i don't know like i i don't no. have a good feel for bohm's market um and it's really difficult to grade harry ford trade packages because harry ford is one of the more polarizing prospects in baseball uh because if you think he can catch if you really think he can catch he's a great prospect He's going to get on base. He's going to hit for some pop. He's going to steal bags and he's a catcher. If you don't, where does he play? You know, does he hit it for enough power to play in a corner, which is probably where he should play, blah, 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 blah. So Ford is, is super polarizing. That's what makes this hard. And and obviously so is bone. So very difficult trade to grade. Tyler has our last deal of the day. Jojo Romero lefty pitcher out of the bullpen and Brendan Donovan, uh, from the Cardinals to the Mariners for Emerson Hancock, Troy Taylor, Lazaro Montez, Ben Williamson, and Tyler Guff. Yeah, it's three years of Donovan. Uh, I believe it is. I believe it's three years, might be four years of Romero. Uh, so Romero, I mean, it, again. it has to be two or three because he's been in the league for a while. Yeah, uh, Romero to me is. Again, he's kind of in that Trent Thornton role. Uh, so, yeah, two two more years. Yeah. So to me, he's kind of in that Thornton role, like whatever. I don't consider him to be a huge part of this trade. The real price here is Donovan. Now, if you can get Romero for Emerson Hancock, fine, whatever. Like, totally. Romero's a useful big leaguer. Hancock, you can fill out the blanks there. Uh, mm-hmm. So if it costs you Hancock and Guff to get Jojo Romero, fine. Uh, Troy Taylor, Laz Montez, Ben Williamson. Uh, for three years of Brendan Donovan. It's a lot. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. And uh, to me, Taylor, like obviously Taylor helps you next year at the big league level. So yeah, you could say that Romero replaces Taylor. It's just, a, it's just the inclusion of Laz. I'm not, I'm not trading Laz Montes for, for Brendan Donovan. Sorry. Would you trade Harry Ford? Sure. Yeah. Would you trade Cole Young? No. Interesting. So pretty much seems, would you trade Michael Arroyo? No. Hmm. Would you trade Ty Pete? Yes. Okay. So it's pretty much anybody outside the top four. Yeah. Uh, would you trade Johnny Farmello as the headliner? No. no. Okay. So you're, you're not super high on Donovan. Uh, he's, he's a good player. He's a good yeah. player. And he, and he addes an obvious mm-hmm. need on the roster. You kind of pick which one he does too. Now, let like me say basis. this. It probably takes one of those guys to get the Cardinals yeah. to trade them. Mm-hmm. At that point, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Not on Donovan. Uh, I still think that the Cardinals are going to, if you ask for Donovan, they're going to be like, okay, Bryce Miller. Because the Cardinals need pitching, and they need young pitching. <laughs> yeah, and I'll laugh at them. Yeah, and exactly. Then and, and then they'll be like, oh, well, do you want, like, like again, for me to trade Miller or Wu to the Cardinals, it's like, you're going to give me Donovan, you're going to give me Walker, and you're going to give me like new bar or something mm-hmm. like that. And even yeah. then I'm like, 
Yeah. Like, is that the the Godfather offer? I don't know if it is. Walker has his own issues, and so does Newt Bar. But Donovan's not a great hitter. He's pretty good. He's a good player. Like, I don't want to undersell Donovan. He's a good player. Yeah. Good player. I don't want to give up potentially great players to get a good player. Not for not for a guy like Donovan. It's just different. Yeah. Defense carries Donovan's value for the most part. It's mostly defense that carries his value. Again, he's a good hitter. He's not a terrible hitter by any stretch. But no, I don't want to give up. He's a one fifteen WRC plus hitter. Yes, I would trade Cole Young or Harry Ford straight up for Donovan and be okay about it. I, I prefer not to. I would prefer not to. But if that's what it costs and that was the best you could do, I would do that. I'm not giving up Laz. I'm not giving up Arroyo. I'm not giving up Emerson. I'm not giving up uh, uh, Pete. And I'm not giving up because I think those guys have the potential to be like all stars. Young and Ford, I don't know if they're quite there yet, but I think they're very likely going to be good major leaguers. So uh, I would trade a, a likely good major leaguer for a current good major leaguer. Um, but yeah, Donovan is, is a bit tricky. I'm not giving up anybody in my top four or five for him. Well, that's not true because I'd give up Young. Yeah, or, you just said or Young Ford. or Ford. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like I, I, want, I don't want to give up too much upside play on a guy like Donovan because I think his upside is pretty limited. But Six years of Young for for three years of Donovan, sure, yeah, absolutely. And then most of this rest of the stuff is filler, but Taylor is kind of a, a sticking point as well because you you need potential leverage arms in your bullpen. Romero's not that guy. Taylor might be. Uh, so overall, interesting deal. I think it's an overpay uh, from the Mariners' perspective, but I think your valuation of what the Cardinals would ask. Or yeah. in return for Donovan, I think it's pretty spot on, which is why I've I've never been a huge like Donovan, go out and get Donovan type of guy. Yeah, I think the the deal itself, like I can see how you came to the conclusion that you yep. did. So I'll, I'll give you props for that and give you a grade bump for that, even though that I'm out, I wouldn't do this deal. Yeah, I'll still give you a fifty five for the the thought process. Yeah, I, I think I'm at it like a fifty. Uh, yeah. it's pretty good. Like, I, I think, I think your cost analysis here is, is pretty spot on to what the Cardinals would ask for. Mm. I wouldn't do it, but again, it's not really about that. It's about how good is the trade proposal. So 50, 55, somewhere in that range. I, I think you're pretty yeah. close to what, uh, Donovan trade would have to look like. Sure. All right. So that is going to do it for our show. Thank you all for all of your trades. We really appreciate it. Uh, before we get out of here, a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidding Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Tidding Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.